Oh, I, I cut off the wrong, I cut off, I did cut off the right one. Then I, I just grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> I hate to admit it, I literally almost never read the directions on anything. You're, you weren't even looking at what I was saying. Hello everybody, welcome back to our Blessed Performance YouTube channel. We're going to put a SNB fuel tank in the blue jeans. We're also going to install the SNB sending unit. And then we're also going to install a fast 220 on the blue jeans. So realistically, the shucks already got came from the factory with a 44 gallon tank. We're gonna improve that dramatically. So right now we got about 84 gallons of fuel, eight, no, 88 gallons of fuel when we're traveling, which seems like a lot, I agree, but we wanna increase that even more. When we're all said and done, we should have close to like 125 gallons is what we calculated of diesel fuel. When we're towing, we're getting 11 to 12, pretty good. We'll be able to go 1400 miles one way without stopping but then we drink monsters and coffees and yep so anyways we're gonna put a fuels tank in here we're gonna improve this dramatically underneath here the tank is just absolutely humongous and i'm pretty excited for it and then we're also going to install this s and b sending unit so um when i went to a little s and b training class they talked about these and these are going to be released for a lot of other vehicles going forward this is quite the invention. So in the past, installing a fast on a 17 plus 6.7 power stroke, you gotta take your sending unit out. Okay, now that the air compressor is done doing its thing, we can talk again. So this SNB sending unit, I saw it in action. Um, they did a video where they put some GoPros in the fuel tank and whatnot, and put a gallon of diesel in there with this guy and a fast paired with it. With a gallon of diesel, you should be running out of fuel. Your truck probably won't run with only a gallon of diesel in your factory tank. This here is designed to allow the fuel to pick up dramatically better. This is designed to pick up fuel, put it in the bucket where the fast can get it out of here and use it, utilize it to feed the engine, obviously. We have a whole bunch of information on our website about this. I'm totally drawing a brain fart right now, <laughs> but needless to say, there's a reason that I chose this, and it's because it's designed to work directly with an aftermarket fuel system such as the Fast 140, 220, or 240 for your 6.7 power stroke. And the reason that we're using this is I don't, I've, I've done the install of a Fast on, on an, an aluminum duty before in a 17 to 19, and it's quite the pain to modify the bowl. This is already modified for the installation of a Fast and or Air Dog, we're going with a Fast on ours. But if you're doing an aftermarket fuel system, you have to modify your factory pickup to make it work properly. We're gonna get started on this. I'm not gonna talk a boatload. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of, if you will, um, tutorial on how to pull a fuel system, fuel tank. It's really not rocket science. There's directions that come with the fuel tank itself on how to pull this. I've only got maybe five to six gallons of diesel in here, so it shouldn't be too heavy. Then we're gonna drop the tank down. And when we're going to install the new tank, we'll show you some of how to install it and whatnot. And then we'll also show you how to install it fast on one of these bad boys. Obviously, if you're not installing the S and B sending unit with the fast, you'll have to follow the fast directions for how to modify your factory sending unit that's in your tank to allow the fast to properly feed itself. On the 1719s, this guy actually mounts over here on the passenger side where most of them mount from fast is on the driver's side the other cool thing about this obviously if you guys don't know enough about fast is the reason that we're using a fast is it filters down to two microns and the biggest thing here the biggest most important thing that especially for us cp4 impaired folks um <laughs> the cp4 impaired folks in life it's crucial to keep water out of your fuel system keeping the water out of your fuel system helps the longevity of your cp4 we all know that CP4s are prone to failure. They, they like to chew themselves up and send metal throughout the fuel system. If you own something with a CP4, you need to do everything you can to pre prevent that and protect it. The tried and true best way to protect it is a fast fuel system that filters 99% efficiency of the water out of your fuel. That is the number one killer of these fuel systems is water. Uh, yeah, follow along. We look forward to having fun with you guys.
don't get dirty during this. <laughs> Glad you know. All right, next we're gonna do the filler neck. So we went ahead and removed the DF tank filler neck and the fuel tank filler neck because we're gonna drop the whole thing down as one. If I recall correctly, that's how they're, they're connected. So we've got both of them removed and we're gonna go back up. Yep, this is a lot easier with a four post lift. Yep, eight, five and a half. This little plastic thing right here. Pops right off. Just, just pops right out of there. It. Just gotta go underneath it, pops right out. Close this little area. It's just about done. Because the impact gets caught on the drive shaft. Uh, I know. I'm being lazy and didn't want to reach out and grab <laughs> So, the first one we pulled broke in half. So, these uh, lovely retaining nuts that designed by Ford just snapped right in half, if you can see. While well, the bolt's going through it, obviously this just spins then. So, we took a pair of Nipix and grabbed the top side with a piece of metal on the bottom and Adam ran the impact and pulled it out. Sometimes things break and get fun. Finished pulling this son again out of here. Let's see, hopefully, we, hopefully Adam got it balanced pretty decent. Probably not. Probably not. I would probably agree with you. Me too. Nice. Now your SMB tank does come with new straps. I don't know how many, if it's all of them or just one of them. But don't so, throw anything away until you know. Yeah, don't throw anything away until you know. As we're pulling the last bolt on the last strap, I think it's gonna about to break, so Adam's grabbing the top side. You got it? Uh-huh. It already broke, huh? Good. Can you throw a nut anywhere? Yeah, I can see it, but... It... Okay, go ahead. You got it? Just don't fucking rip my hands off. Yeah. Plus America. There's a piece of metal that, like, whenever it broke, it went up. So now it's... Hang on, real quick. Let me get you a little better bite. Oh. Or for a split second. Ah, that's frustrating. Brand new trucks do things that are dumb too, people. You think you'd be better with a pair of like, um, with a crescent wrench or anything? No, because we were just gonna strip it. <laughs> think I'm on hammer? No mm -hmm. lie. Yeah. I got kind of shitty Thanks, there. Thanks, Ford. So if you want to come underneath here and help me stabilize it. Yeah, I suppose. All right. Right on your side. Yep. Go ahead and lower it. <laughs> Up next, we got the electrical plug right there coming down. We need to get that unplugged and then fish out the filler neck as well. We had to disconnect our filler neck. I have my tank in the bed plumbed into here. Now the tank should just nice and fall right down. We got the electrical plug up the top, which I'll show you that once we're down. It's kind of hard to show it on camera while it's in there, but I had to disconnect the, if you didn't have this here, you would just disconnect these two right here from the actual tank. I have a T for mine, obviously. So now we're gonna continue dropping the tank. Ready to come down? Yeah, we're completely detached up here. Well, let's get it down to this level and then we'll take it down from there. Wait, what are we hooked on right there, Adam? Hold up, hold up, hold up. We've got something, just, some, something zip tied on that side. You got this balanced? Or? Yeah. Oh, it's that, your, um, your light. I know. Can you? I got you it. You got it? Yeah. Because it's falling. Right. Hey. Well, I don't even work anymore, so obviously I didn't do it right. Something's not right. Okay, so we'll have to fix that wire. So you can see up top here, we've been bottle feeding this thing which I think this right here might be going is where it might be might have been overfilling because is that the vent yeah there's two vents though there's one here oh so it just there yeah it, probably it must have come out of this vent yeah mm -hmm. so we had a little bit of a fuel leak when we were on the road and a little bit of a whine from the pump from right here needless to say we're going to get this all the way down to the ground we got to pull 
Uh, so here's the electrical plug that's right here. Have to reach up in there. And it's kind of the hardest part right here is grab this guy right here and unplug it. And then that will allow that to drop down or disconnect your um, filler, neck. filler neck lines. I keep pulling a brain fart on that. I don't know why. I don't know why either. But now we're going to go ahead and set it on the ground. It's not very heavy because we only got a few gallons of diesel in it. Yeah, it's pretty decent. At least you don't have the really messy guy. That sure is a big peak. All right, guys, so here's for comparison. Look at the size difference. Massive difference. Oh, my bad, I was wrong. It was a 68 gallon replacement tank. Oh, so okay. 28 gallons. 28 gallons. No, 24. 24. Okay, 24 gallons of distance here. So I'm gonna grab, we have to pull out the sending unit. And normally we would be reinstalling the fuel pump and the lift pump and whatnot. We're going to go ahead and pull it off just because. But we're not going to be reinstalling that because we're running a fast on this guy. Alright, you might think I'm crazy. Or why the hell was I vacuuming my fuel tank? Well, obviously we have to pull the sending unit out and the last thing I want to do is get a whole bunch of dirt in there. So before I go to pull the full fuel sending unit out, I'm gonna, I always take and clean off the top of the tank. Should be able to just twist this. Yeah, we gotta twist the inside, un unlock it. So we can take this tab off right here. As you're doing this, you're gonna kick up more dirt. So I'd suggest stopping and cleaning up as you go. So that way, you don't get all that dirt in your fuel. There we go. There we go. I was doing it backwards. Whoop there. Yep, okay. Completely normal. Now we'll take and rinse that guy off. We're gonna wanna vacuum right. one more time before we pull it out. All right, folks, so with our S&B sending unit, and because we're going with a fast fuel system, we're gonna be hooking up a Venturi concept. This is all explained in the S&B directions, but I figure I'll just kind of try to show you guys and walk you through what we're doing here. All we need from the original OE sending unit, since we're going with an aftermarket one, and this only works with an aftermarket fuel system, by the way, that's what this was designed for, just so you know, it does have in directions in the description and installation, but for $299, it's a lot easier than t cutting that whole thing apart, taking it all apart and trying to figure out, make sure you have the proper venturi for the fast. We got our sending unit swapped over, our fuel tank gauge, and then we're gonna put this bad boy in over here. We put the O-ring in place. Now we're going to now this is very, very snug. <clears throat> so I've got it started right there. And now I'm gonna grab my hammer and my handy dandy pry bar. And I want to go past that ledge right there. It's going to be a pain in the rear end, but it's got to go past that. There we go. It's seated. So now I know we're good there. Now in the installation directions, it explains which hose goes where. It's pretty, pretty easy to determine it from sitting out here, but need to say we're going to get started uh, hooking all that stuff up and then we'll put the cover back over the top. And then the tank will be ready to go back in and we'll be ready to hook our fast to it. So we got a mess, obviously. We'll clean it up. That being said, so clearly you've heard this on my, on our channel before. Anytime you're doing something custom to market to your truck, you may have to use the old thinking noggin a little bit. Ah, so that's kind of what I did. I kind of sat back a little bit because there's not a clear direction, clear directions, I should say, on how to install the S&B 
sending unit with a fast. You remove half of the fast directions doing this, which is awesome because I'm gonna tell you right now, the factory sending unit modifications are a lot and they are a pain. We're not gonna use half the stuff in the fast kit, which um, like the majority of this in here, we're not gonna use. We'll use this guy, we'll use this harness. This is what tricks your factory fuel pump to not freak out that there's no fuel pump in there, okay? That it doesn't realize that there is one. We're not gonna use this because we're not drilling to the top of our tank. Most of these fittings down here, we're not gonna use. We're just gonna have some extra stuff. But I had to kind of sit back and figure out, remind myself how to plumb this thing because it's been a little while. This isn't something I do every day. This line right here on the SMB is your supply to your pump or your fast suction. This is your engine return. So you notice right there, well, the engine lines, the ones that come to the factory, these hard plastics, and we tried to heat it up, if you can see, and all we did was burn it, burn a hole. Tried to see if I could reuse it. So basically I took a knife, cut the ends off here, and I stuck the factory OEM stuff straight into here, pulled on it nice and snug. This is really snug in here. I'm gonna have to cut it again if I wanna remove it. So I put that, that's the factory plug right there for your factory engine return. And this is, once again, the factory fitting for the factory engine return right here. I marked each line, engine return. And over here we have the fast suction, we have the fast return, and we have our Venturi system. What happens is your fast We'll be supplying the engine plus that bowl in the bottom of the sending unit. That bowl in the bottom of the sending unit, the fast will be supplying that plus the engine at the same exact time, which will allow this thing to essentially never run out of fuel. I, I, all I can say is hop on the website, watch the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's freaking awesome. It's definitely a major upgrade over, um, in my opinion, over trying to modify the factory sending unit. Yes, it's possible and it works doing the factory sending unit. We've done it. When you get blow out of a tank, the fast gets a little loud because it starts to starve a little bit. I've noticed that. The sending unit's not really developed for the fast, in my opinion. So, I mean, a lot of guys have gone to a sump and then you don't have any problems. I didn't want a sump because we're going cross country with this truck all the time. The last thing I need is another spot to leak. So, we have it all lined out. So, before we put the tank in, we're gonna put the fast up here. So, the fast should mount right here on this side of my bed, the front frame rail, there's a block that comes with, you put that in and then you hook your fast straight to that. Well, you hook your, your, your bar and then your fast to that essentially. So we have our fast fuel system mounting block here. So what this is going to do is, if you see that bolt right there, up and over that, like that. Fast does say to make sure you take this double, this got it, a sticky tape on this side and it's just an isolator to help make sure there's no noise so we're going to take and put this up and then we're going to use this nut and washer inside of there and thread directly onto the oem bed bolt just like so i'm going to go grab a ratchet real quick and a socket okay i mean there really is no way to put this in backwards only gonna go in one way. Oops. That nuts a 21. Now I gotta find my chrome socket 21 or 22. That's how it works. So we're gonna figure out how to get that tightened up now. Okay, this guy right here goes right to there. There's a rubber isolator. And I recommend some, some Loctite on these. I need a 22 deep socket chrome to tighten that guy up. Uh, just, just so you know, uh, I used a uh, chisel and a hammer, but it worked. That being said, we could take and spin this around, but I don't want the pump facing that way, obviously. So I can't spin this around. So now that I've looked at this, we're gonna run this all the way back to probably like right here, cause I gotta kick it backwards this way to allow room for the cab and whatnot. So, exactly, because fast means fast. That means we're fast as boy. Yep. And we're gonna go ahead and oh, yep. pick that up. <laughs> Perfect. Yep, get her tight. Did you bring a wrench with you? I did. You did? Yep. No, a wrench to hold the backside. No, these are uh, the tightening ones. The tightening nuts. 
that have little teeth on them. Yeah, that's the, the nuts, not the bolt. So if that's how you want to do this, we got to do it. We got to spin these around. Wait, what? Oh, I see what you're saying now. Because this is just spinning right now. Copy that. Now this will do what you want it to do. I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> Once it starts snugging up, it'll hold itself. And then it's a lot easier. The more you know. Mm -hmm. It's Adam's favorite thing to say is the more you know. The more you know. Because it's true, the more you know. I know. You're not wrong, sir. You are not wrong. Ugh. Stop, back it up. We gotta go that way with it. Oh, so... It didn't come it out It didn't want to come out, huh? No, it didn't want to come out. I was able to get the other one, not that one. I appreciate the locking nuts, though. Yes, thanks, guys. Here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, okay. I suggest you have this figured out. I mean, technically I did, I just had it the wrong way. Yep. Okay, let's try this one more time. <laughs> Pretty excited. Yeah. And we'll be able to drive from here to Nashville next week. <clears throat> well, that actually having to fill up. Well, one of us won't. Yeah, the other one won't. Yeah. SMB, that's, that makes, he makes a solid point. Can you make a bigger fuel tank for a 2023 expedition, please? The Timberline or whatever. Timberline, Limited, any of them. We need a bigger fuel tank for them gassers too, because they don't get good mileage. When they're towing, they don't, they don't like it. Especially since we can't tune it yet. Yeah, it doesn't help. We did help with the S&B intake, so thank you, and... Yeah, that actually worked beautifully. What exhaust did you put on there, Magnaflow? Magnaflow. Yeah, that worked really Magnaflow well. Magnaflow exhaust and an S&B intake, and somehow we gained like five miles a gallon. Yeah. Does a lot different. It, diesel's not so much, but a gasser, yes. Guarantee you can't see nothing Diesel is secure, guys. Merch link in bio. <laughs> <laughs> Merch link in the bio, he says. Diesel is secure. As this is called the LRB, I think in the fast directions it's a level resistor is what i can decipher essentially or a fuel pump resistor so essentially this is letting the ecm think that there's still a fuel pump in the tank that was disgusting what i didn't That's even dumb. do it towards you <laughs> i can smell it over here <laughs> so anyways in the fast directions they call it lrb i don't know what the hell they're standing for i ain't gonna lie to you that being said this guy right here will take an south tapper into the frame and you'll want to kind of play with your positioning um i've just kind of set this up here and i just kind of pulled on both of them and i know that this isn't going to restrict me we need these two smaller ones still the two smaller wires that is your sending unit not that's your tank's level sensor okay so <clears throat> in the directions they call it a 10 gauge wire that's clearly a 10 gauge wire so we're gonna take those two wires snip them strip them clean plug those in Electrical tape it up and then zip tie it together. Well, zip tie it out of the way. This guy right here is for your water and fuel sensor. Uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna leave it unplugged. I don't think it should cause a check engine light. We'll find out. If I need to come back in here, I'll come back in here and take the sensor out of there and plug it in. That would have been for my water fuel separator that's mounted right here that we're no longer using because we have a fast and the fast gets rid of 99% of water better than your OEM filters do. Adam's gonna mount that. I'm gonna do some splicing. So guys, Adam is pre-drilling, which is the smart thing to do. Now, when you snip off the wires under here, always leave yourself room to reconnect should you ever have to. I don't know why you would, but who knows. Now FAST does not say there's a specific orientation or the way this has to be done. It's just a jumper, just a resistor. Just for cleanliness of the install, I'm just gonna pull the whole harness out. And then just for good measure, I'm going to take in, because we live in Gillette, Wyoming, where it gets cold and snowy and lots of moisture, I'm going to wrap these with electrical tape. Quick recap, Adam mounted that bracket right there, put the LRB1000 right there, 1001. I spliced it in over here to both 10 gauge wires, and that's it. Now we'll plug this back in, we'll still have our sending unit to 
um, our fuel level sending unit. So our fuel gauge will still work. And this will trick the ECM to not freak out when we have uh, the fast up and running. So next I'm gonna run the wires for the fast up to the front up there, just because. And then we're going to put the tank in. We've got all the wire wiring up here to where we can go up once we pop the hood and hook up our powers and our ground to the battery and then give it our keyed on control, which for my truck, I already, in the instructions, they say to use, I think they said to use number six for this bed on your, if you have upfitter switch, it makes it super easy. Anyways, because my truck, we have all of the upfitters being used, we're gonna use it on the most, on the one that literally never gets shut off and that's for the grill and my headlights, LED bars and the headlights. Uh, if you guys watch Roadkill Garage, What's the rule of? Oh, never one zip tie. When they ask for zip ties, give them a whole damn bag. Obviously, Blue Jeans has the old uh, compound turbos. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but the down pipe goes that way. So I was not going to run this harness that way. We extended the harness with a spare fast harness kit that I have here. And we went right through, right here, right through this bracket right here up and over and it came out right there super clean look if you look there's the wire right there can't see it it's as protected as protected is going to ever be okay as we're putting this back up we're going to have to fish our filler neck hoses back up where they go and other than that we're going to have to hook up our electrical what I will say is something that I'm going to do is this one's going to stay here. I'm going to hang this here kind of off to the side. So once it's up in there, I can see it and I can find a high spot and zip tie it up. Okay, this is our, our breather. So I'm going to take and zip tie this just like so. And then I'll find a high spot for the other breather as well. Pretty good. I got the hoses routed too. I think. And it looks like we do gotta come back with her a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yes, they're in front of that, supposed to be in front of that brace. In that bed brace right there. Okay, now we gotta reach up in there and plug the electrical in real quick. Okay. Right. Pretty well positioned. Yep. One thing. I've already hooked up the return from the engine in the front. Oh, good. So we definitely know you had enough line there. So, I'd say she's ready to go all the way up. I'd say so as well. Uh, okay. I've got to go up over the oh, next okay. I'd say this is, oh, there we go. Ooh. That's nice. I think we're, smokes we're pretty spot on right now, actually. Yeah, we're spot on. So now we'll be driving down the highway, and if you look, if you just look close enough, just the right spot, You'll see the SMB logo. Boom. We gotta figure out, okay, this one I think should go back there. I'm pretty certain it goes back there. I think you're right, actually. Yeah, because it only goes halfway over here. Yeah. It goes it's, the the full, it's the full Maybe. length. Can't oh, wait, see. sorry, I was in the wrong spot. Is that the, it's either that one or this one that goes right oh, there. Oh, my. Uh, nope, that one doesn't go right there then. Yeah, actually, I think, so the way that no, it the goes. Long. The long the long no, one. Oh, this it. is the long one? Flip, flip. There, yeah, I see. I, I'm gonna flip it. <laughs> this one definitely goes back there. It doesn't reach. What do you mean? The mark goes right here. Oh, this one doesn't go here either then. Those were not pushed up all the way. There you go. Okay. Well, there is a high level size on this one, huh? Probably did. I mean, this one goes right here. 100%. We're decently far away still. Yep, I think just how long the bolts are will set up all that. Okay, this is the one that's on. It was this one? Yep, here. 
I uh, think. I don't know. Can would you be able to go on the outside? And, um, I don't know if I can see what I'm doing from here. Hang on. Hold like, tight. Oh, okay. Nope. If this one isn't the broken one, then there. Where was this broken one at? It had to. Have, no, it was this one for sure. But the thing is, is that tab's not broken up there. I got this side in right here. This is the skid plate here. I definitely remember it being over here. I could have swore one was broken over here. Well, I was gonna get this one going. Yep. Right. That's my head. Snug that bitch up. Uh, she'll spin on you, fair warning. Eh, we'll find out. Some of your damn wobbles. Wobbles are great in certain areas. Yeah. Let's kind of let go now. Perfect. Didn't spin once. Nope. Some people just have all the luck. I'll tell you what, dude. She's installed. Yes, sir. I mean, high five. We just dramatically improved our distance. Yeah. And our fuel yep. filtration. The size of these hoses. Can't find that on Ford Factory. You want to grab those heat shields and you slide them over and then we'll go up over the frame and zip tie these all right up top there on that bracket. What heat shields are we talking about? They're in the, the fast bag. They come in their, their black little wrap heat shield in the fast bag. But we also did change a few things, so it may not work. It may not work as designed. Nothing like wearing a condom for the first time, huh? Yeah. Pretty much. The people steam. Oh, that's a good fit though right there. It's a really good fit. Now we're plumbing it all in. Adam's gonna be here. He'll go over what we're doing as and I'm gonna be running the supply to the engine line back here. I get the fun task of trying to get this fitting on the hose. That's fun. Sorry for taking the challenges in life, sir. It's fine. Don't let it happen again though. Think about it. So it's okay to apply a little heat just to get the rubber loose. If you can believe it, I did just get it on there a little bit further. So heat does work. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, that was perfect. You're good, buddy. I promise you, you're good. I'll just grab all this time. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere, <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> so, guys, I know that we like probably should have heated this up a little bit more before putting it on. Usually you want those buttoned all the way up. Clearly we could, uh, and we could take and, we have plenty here, we could take and cut some off. But I'm not one bit worried about it. We're just gonna put a hose clamp right there. It'll hold just fine. And barb fittings pretty much don't leak. That is coming from our tank to the fast. So that's our supply from the tank. And then right here we have our Venturi system. This is gonna go, up here and go right there on the small one and then get this out of the way for a sec. Go is a good idea. See how we, I don't know if you can really see that, but it says fast, uh, fast return to tank. So it's a good idea to write that stuff down just in case you forget or you can't follow your lines anymore. This is our return right here. Uh, and then this will be our issue going to the truck. And then this will be the mentors I was telling you about. Now guys, obviously, um, Fast has installed tongs, and as much as I agree with them, I also disagree. I think that if you just slow down just a little bit and make it look really nice, you win. So pay attention to where you're routing. Pay attention to your pay attention to your routing of your wires. Take a few extra minutes and organize it really clean. I'm feeling it right here. The one that I just cut off, I am so confused right now. How did we do that? How did we screw that up? Because that goes right up here. What's this wee thing? Uh, that, the one that I, oh, I, I cut off the wrong, I cut off, I did cut off the right one. Then I, I just grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down on that. No, you're good, you're good. It's, it's in the right spot. I gotta grab another one of those fittings. That's okay, right so spot. this is still the return. No, that's the supply at the end. Oh my, if you just turn around and look well, at what I, I was saying. Oh, yes. you're, you weren't even looking at what I was saying. 
Whoops, I was I got a little confused. Nope, nope. I got it. This is this. Yep. I I cut one and then grabbed the other one, guys. That's, that's what I did. So I confused myself a little bit. I cut the right one and then grabbed the wrong one to hook up. <laughs> we'll find out. Who doesn't love a good GIC, huh? Yeah. I agree. Man, look at how clean that all looks. Uh -huh. And then the best part is, is that Fast is ever so kind that they all fit with this little layer right here for them tight spaces. Okay, we should probably let them go. Because this was the only one that. This is the return to tank. Oh, you got a little pipe thread on you. Oh, I did? Oh, I sure did. What's up? Nothing. <laughs> uh, get it all the way on there? I already stunk this one up right here, right? Uh huh. Oh, no, the issue? No, I haven't stunk that one up yet. That's not that's not that's not that's not Cool. Filter zip time. Tag. We'll use zip filters, time. I'll do zip tags. Look at how clean that looks. I love it. All nice and clean. So we got these. This is my engine supply going up here, up over that, right down into here. The one with a clamp on it is the engine supply. The other one's the return. We have all of our lines from our tank. We have a Venturi line, which is right here. We have the fast engine or the supply to the engine. We have the return to the tank and then the fast supply. Now we're gonna lower the truck, pick up a little bit, and lower the truck, hook up our electrical, and fill what we have left of diesel over here into the tank. As much as I hate to admit it, I literally almost never read the directions on anything. So I went back and looked just to make sure, because I'm trying to figure out the quick equation to put the skid plate back on. So I really would like to have the skid plate in here. And I realized what this U-bolt right here is for. It's to support the front of the tank. Mind you, I don't think that it needs it, but SMB says it's supposed to be there. So I just had to wrestle. If you look up there, you can see some a bolt right there. On the bolt on the other side, there's a bracket that goes on the top. It's got a little groove in it to set the U-bolt into. Now I'm gonna wrestle the U-bolt down through there and it goes right into this groove right here. And this comes down over here. And then this plate right here goes up right into here, just like that. And then we'll put the U-bolt nuts on. So the lesson is maybe take a look at the directions or watch this video before installing all the way through and you'll be able to learn from my mistakes and Adam's, because Adam didn't look at it either. So it's his fault too. Because I thought you read them. Well, you got to know that I'm not going to read them. I don't know if this is going in. I don't think this is going in. So you're supposed to put the U-bolt in before the tank too? Yeah, I think so. Because it's just thinking I'm freaking... I can't get it turned right now. It's in, almost in place, but I can't get it turned. I just can't get it to turn into there. Sure is close though, I'll say that much. Oh, I think I just got it. Can you get me there quick? But yeah, I can feel it, it's still stuck on the it's stuck on the nut, huh? Yeah, it's still stuck on the nut. Up and over that way. <sighs> Well, son of a bitch, what do we do? Ugh. Cause I only need like a half an inch. And it'll go in from the other side. Same issues before. Hang on, it's almost there. Hang on, hold, back it back up real quick. Okay. Because the nut's sticking out here. Yep, it's the bolt sticking out. Okay, here. Let me loosen that up real quick in there. 
Oh, it's the bolt going through the rock, through the bracket, or through the nut that's mm -hmm. in the way right now. This one. you watch this before you go install this and don't try to go step by step yeah like please watch yeah. please read the instructions that wasn't very fun to win and we're able to hook it up the proper way so i'm going to say it's done the right way none of those hoses are binding in there no. Kink or anything? What size is that you think? 19? Okay, I feel like starting. Right. You got it in the groove? Yeah. So this is the LRB 1000 like we showed you earlier. We were able to put the skid plate back in. You can reuse the rear factory mounts for the skid plate right there. Right. These, these two front ones come with a spacer here and a spacer there. The only goes with those three bolts. It's up in here. I know it's really hard to see, but there is a spacer right on this one right here. This other one back here reuses the factory connections right there, right there. And then it's got this fancy groove right here, but it's not perfect or my skid plate is bent out a little bit or something because it does, it did touch right here and that made lining this side up a little, a little tricky, but we were able to get it in. From there we ran the wires, we already saw where we ran them up here, we just, I just handed them up to Adam, we went behind the power steering lines, brake lines and the steering linkage up top. Now we're going to go ahead and hook everything up up there. So we'll show you guys that after we lower it. We got... I got the battery charger on here because I know that it's going to take a little bit of priming to get this done. Well, we've already primed it a few times, okay? But I'm going to show you guys what we did. So, Adam just turned it on. Ran our main power here. Our ground right over here on the inner fender well. And I have it on upfitter switch number four. Because that's what runs the headlights. And the Blessed Performance logo. She's still breathing some air out of her. Adam's priming her right now. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah. She's definitely got some air in her. Let's give it a shot, buddy. Let's see what happens. There we go. We'll let her, uh, we'll go fill her up. Good job, Adam. All right, guys, be sure to click like, subscribe, follow, check us out on all of our social media accounts. You see that guy once in a while. Yep. See me once in a while. You might even see Minty once in a while. Look at this gorgeous son of a bitch. I mean, 1500 bucks at auction. AC and heat both work. And, and we're then, converting uh, it to a dually. That's huh? what these are for. Oh yeah, we're converting it to a dually. <laughs> yep. That's called weight loss. Yep, it's called weight loss. 